So Malcolm Gladwell is an innovative storyteller and a cultural phenomenon. All four of his books have hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list. He has now combined three of them, The Tipping Point, Blink, and Outliers, into a single volume called Malcolm Gladwell Collected, the definitive edition. Malcolm Gladwell is with us this morning, as is it's the cool. new collection. The artwork is cool, right? Can we get a shot of that? And that was really, this was, this was really important to you, too, that that there still be physical books yes. and that they be a, a beautiful thing that, that that's an experience beyond just the read. Yeah, because we're, we've been moving in the direction of making everything digital and disposable. And I think it's important at the same time to remember that books can be beautiful objects. And so, you know, we went out and we got a world-class illustrator, Brian Ray, and a world-class designer, Paul Serra, and I told them to create an, an object that people could value and could um, feel and enjoy, and it's like, Five pounds. I mean, it's not a. It's not insubstantial. I worked no, out. I worked out with it this exactly, morning. Exactly. Exactly. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. You feel the guns. Yeah. Totally. Um, uh, are you on Kindle, by the way? Or do you, do you put your books on Kindle? Yes, they're are available. I, mean, okay. I think that's okay. where we're going with books, yeah. right? This, okay. They're going to be available in many different forms. But I feel like one of the forms should be something like that. You can still have the round. Um, one reviewer said they feel smarter after reading <laughs> your books. There's one thing they definitely. Whether or not they feel you feel smarter. Sometimes I. I, I the way they make me think, I don't always feel smarter, but not in a bad way. But they do make you think, and that's your goal. Yeah. To, I like to think of myself as someone who is a conversation starter, um, that these books are, are leading people to think about their world, rearrange their world in different ways. And if they don't agree with me, that's fine. But I, I like to think that I've at least prompted them to have a conversation in a different way about something. You, uh, you just worked on a review of the new Steve Jobs book, yes. the Walter Isaacson's yeah. book. Um, what would you think of it? Uh, well, extraordinary book. Um, uh, Jobs' life is is absolutely um, amazing. Um, and I, but at the end, you know, I found myself comparing him to his great contemporary, Bill Gates, uh -huh. and wondering whether we won't, 50, 100 years from now, when we have forgotten what an iPod will, is, we will remember Gates because of his philanthropy. And that's the one thing Jobs never did, right? Gates has. I think we'll, we'll, we'll be remembered in history as a guy who tackled some of the biggest issues of our time. It, it does seem like at this particular moment that Gates maybe has lost some of his importance. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Jobs has been elevated. Yeah, and maybe that, over time that evens I out a little bit. I think that will be. And one of, the, one of the, you know, Jobs is a very complex character. And in the book says um, many mean things about Gates. I mean, he says a lot of mean things about a lot of people. He was, this, <laughs> he was a difficult yeah. man um, that I think are... Are, were, it's the part of the book that merely, part of his story that made me um, take a step back and say, mm -hmm. this guy was, uh, had, had many sides. He was brutal. He could well, be brutal. brutal. Oh, yeah. But, but, and that assessment, too, and then that comparison between the two also plays into a theme that you've, that you've discussed, which is understanding, our, uh, understanding success and sort of our perception yeah. of what success truly is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we will... At the moment, we, we, because we're so infatuated with you know, the Apple yeah. objects, they're so beautiful. They are. Um, that that's what's uppermost in our mind. But you can look at this issue in a different way, and you can say, if Bill Gates cures malaria, um, that doesn't necessarily change our lives, but it changes the lives of so many. billions of people around the world. Is there one point in particular that over the years, as you've brought up all these different things for us to think about, mm -hmm. that seems to have resonated the most with people, or that they may talk to you the most about? So funny, every book has a different thing that people fasten on. In Outliers, and I would never have predicted it, it was that thing about 10,000 hours. Great. Mm -hmm. Which people bring up and bring up and bring up. <laughs> and and I'm, you know, I can sort of see why in retrospect, but I never thought that when I wrote, when I wrote about it. For, for those who haven't read it, 10,000 hours, the, the, the rule is basically that you establish that you put into the public consciousness. It's that if someone does something for 10,000 hours, essentially they become an expert at it. Or that's the, that is the necessary amount of practice to become uh, uh, truly expert in a given field, yes. Can't, there's no shortcuts, in other words. And in our understanding of success, we sometimes forget those yeah. 10,000 hours and just focus on 10,000 and what. Such a treat to have you with us this morning. Thank you for having me on. Everything he puts out is fascinating, so we mm -hmm. look forward to um, everything that comes in the future. Malcolm Gladwell, thank you very much.